Hey, what's up guys? This is Friendly Developer and today I'm here to talk about the knapsack problem, specifically the 01 knapsack problem. Knapsack problem is a very popular and a standard pro problem in dynamic programming and a clear understanding of knapsack problem will uh, pave the way for understanding many other uh, dynamic programming problems in a very easy manner. So you, once you understand this, you will be able to solve a huge set of other DP problems. Okay, so without further ado, let's get on with it so what is the knapsack problem as you can see you are given a set of items let's say there are n items and each item has a weight and a value associated with it so the problem is given a knapsack or a bag with a certain amount of capacity c we need to choose some subset of items out of this given set such that the value that we get is maximum and uh, the total weight of the items that we have selected doesn't exceed the capacity C. Okay, so we need to find the maximum value without the total weights of the items exceeding the capacity of the knapsack. Okay, so this is the knapsack problem. Now, uh, taking this as an example, here we can see these items and their corresponding weights and values. Here, if we find the solution, the maximum value would be 13 by choosing items 1, 2 and 5. Okay, so for items 1, 2 and 5, the total value would be 2 plus 4 plus 5 that is 13 and uh, uh, 3 plus 4 plus 6 that is 13 and uh, total weight would be 11. Let's solve this problem in a brute force approach and then I'll try to optimize it using dynamic programming. Alright, the problem takes um, the number of items and the corresponding weights and values of all the corresponding items. Uh, so I have taken an array of weights and values and C is the capacity of the knapsack. Okay, uh, let's uh, write a function which solves this problem. So this function will return the maximum value corresponding to the uh, subset of items that we have selected. Okay, so the input is the number of items and the array of weights and an array of values and the capacity of the bag. Okay, so basically here in this problem, we look at each item uh, that has been given and uh, we need to consider two options. Either we choose the item uh, to be included in, in the knapsack or we don't include the item. Either we include or exclude the item. By including the item, the value, the total value gets increased, but also the uh, total capacity of the bag will, remaining capacity of the bag will decrease. Okay, so these are the two um, possibilities that we that we need to check so in the brute force approach we uh, consider both the options in a recursive manner and then try to find out the try to pick the one that gives the maximum value okay so uh, when we code the solution this becomes more clear okay so let's call our function it takes all these input values also let's start by looking at the first item okay in the given set so I'll pass the index as zero. Let's take a variable i which uh, indicates the current item that we are looking at. We'll start by looking at the first item. Okay. So we just need to check if the weight of the item is uh, the weight of the current item that we are looking at is less than the capacity of the bag. Okay. If the weight of the item is less than the capacity of the bag, we know that we can include this item. Okay. But if we include this item, the capacity of the bag will reduce. So we don't know if this is the actual optimal solution. So we just check for both the conditions. Okay. So let's take an integer uh, V1 which represents by including the item V include. Okay. V include value that corresponds to including the item and uh, value that corresponds to exclude item vx okay v in and vx are the variables let's check for both condition so we will be solving the uh, same sub problem in a recursive manner let's uh, rename the function to get maximum value because that's what our function is doing okay so we'll call our function in a recursive manner the two possibilities are either we include or we exclude okay so by including this uh, our function returns some value by excluding it returns some value so the optimal value would be the maximum of the, both of them okay so uh, we just pass in the same set of weights and values and the current capacity would be decreased because 
we are including the item by including the item the current capacity would be decreased by the weight of the item current item and the next function call should look at the next item okay so by including the item we add the value of the current item okay so this is the value that we get by including the item and by excluding the item what do we do we pass the same set of values and uh, the capacity also would remain the same because we are not uh, including the current item so we just proceed to looking uh, look at the next item and we don't add the value because we are not including the item now this is one condition where the weight of the item is less than the capacity the other condition is if it's not uh, less than the capacity then anyway we can't include that item we just uh, find the value corresponding to excluding the item okay okay so we return the optimal value optimal value is the maximum of uh, v in and vx okay in the other condition where uh, the weight actually exceeds the capacity of the bag we just exclude the current item and we move on and uh, we just return once it finds the solution we just return that value okay so there is no need to consider both the possibilities okay so this is the brute force solution the only thing that is left to add is the base condition now if you think about the base condition the only uh, inputs that are changing here for our re recursive function is the capacity of the bag and the uh, current item that we are looking at okay so once we reach the last item so indicated by when i becomes equal to n minus 1 once we reach the last item we we can just return uh, the current value of the item if its weight is less than the capacity or otherwise we just return zero okay so either we can do this or we can check if my uh, i becomes equal to n okay that means we have looked at all the values if you have looked at all the values then uh, there are no more items so we can return zero it can also happen that the capacity of the bank becomes zero so if the capacity becomes zero anyway we know that we can't add any more items so we can just return zero as the value okay so either uh, our i exceeds uh, the capacity either exceeds the number of items or the capacity becomes zero okay so less than or equal to zero okay, now if i print the value for the maximum value we get 13 as the output okay so this is the brute force solution now uh, let's optimize using dynamic programming in the last video where we talked uh, about the fibonacci series i highly recommend that you watch that uh, video because it gives how exactly we go from brute force solution and proceed all the way up to top down and bottom of solutions for optimization all right for the top down approach let's uh, declare a uh, some memory chunk of memory to store our sub results so either we can take a two dimensional array uh, we can take a two dimensional array because uh, if you look at the problem uh, if you look at the uh, function that's solving this problem in this function all the input items are uh, remaining the same in every call only the capacity and the current item are only the uh, quantities that are changing so to represent all possible inputs we can take a two dimensional memory or two dimensional array or we can take a map uh, that maps a string to an integer the string we will we can construct a string which uh, uniquely identifies a combination of uh, the capacity and the current item that we are looking at so uh, that will map onto the uh, integer result okay uh, okay now let's uh just initialize this two dimensional array i'll take this as my memory to store as my cache memory okay so as and when we find the solution to any problem uh, we store the uh, input and the corresponding output okay here instead of returning it directly once we find the solution let's store this in our cache memory okay so the cache memory has two dimension one dimension will use to store the capacity and the other will use it to store the current item okay we can take it in any order okay. and uh, so this is the result so here also instead of returning the result we'll 
store the solution to the current input okay these are the only changing input so we don't we just need to store uh, the uh, input for these okay so we just return the case result okay so the next time the function gets called we check if uh, if our cache contains any value that is greater than zero for the corresponding input okay these uh, the input is specified by i and c if it's greater than zero then we just return the stored sub result from the cache okay so this is our dynamic programming optimization in the top down approach all right coming to the time complexity and space complexity of brute force solution uh, once we make the call to get maximum value each call will make two more calls uh, considering the worst case each function call will make two more calls and uh, those two will make four calls and four will make uh, eight and so on so the number of times the function gets called is increasing exponentially in powers of two okay so for a brute force solution the time complexity would be uh, big o of two power n okay where n is the number of items we have and uh, every time you can see that this increase in powers of two happens for n times because uh, every time we'll be moving uh, to the next item and this happens for n times okay so uh, time complexity is 2 power n and the space complexity is constant for uh, brute force solution because we are not using any space any extra space other than the input now for top down approach the time complexity would get reduced to number of items into uh, the total capacity this is because uh, for top down approach we'll be caching the uh, result of sub problems as and when we find the solution so when we are caching the result uh, we will be indexing the i i corresponds to the index of the item and c which is the uh, capacity okay so the maximum range of i and c would be from 0 to n and c would be from 0 to initial capacity so the total uh, space complexity would be uh, n into c both time complexity and space complexity would be n into c because uh, maximum number of times the function can get called it can only be at max n into c because uh, i can take values from 0 to n and c can take values from 0 to capital c that is the initial capacity this problem is uh, specifically called 0 1 knapsack because uh, for every item you either include that item or you exclude that item this is these are the only two choices that you have so it's either zero or one okay in the next video we shall look into how we can solve this using the uh, usual standard bottom-up approach where we'll be filling a table the table will consist of all the possible uh, inputs that is uh, the item numbers here it corresponds to i and the capacity c okay so we'll consider all the possible sub problems and we go on solving all of them uh, in in a manner that we'll see in the next video and hope you guys see you found this video useful if you did please like and don't forget to subscribe see you guys next time